My name is Savannah. I'm 15, and I'm in a police station. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I haven't done anything wrong. But my mom still doesn't believe me. Maybe you can support me. Here's what happened. I'm new at school, and it's not easy. The last year has been difficult for my mom and me. My dad died unexpectedly in a car accident, and we were left alone. My mom went into work, and I started skipping school. Dad meant everything to me. He was my best friend. He supported me as I went to dance classes and did quite well. He went to all the contests and competitions that I performed in. And after he passed away, I didn't care anymore about dancing. Soon I found myself in bad company, and I got out of hand altogether. My mom had to take a long vacation at her own expense to get things back on track. And now my mother and I decided to start all over again. New town, new job, new school. On my first day at school, I saw an ad in the lobby. They were needing dancers in the school band. Come to the casting! And my heart quickened. <gasps> Only a year ago, I was a star in my school of modern dance. I successfully passed the casting. I was given a team uniform, and the training began. My mother was very happy, and me no less. Dancing was the basis of my life before that terrible accident with my father. And now it was like a return to the old me. There were four girls in the group, and one of them, Ava, was the leader. I knew right away that she didn't like me. Even at the casting, she was burning me with her eyes. And the girls on the team whispered to me that I was a very cool dancer. And Ava was afraid that I was better than her. I did not pay attention to her slanting eyes. And I was just focusing on dancing. In a couple of weeks, there was a competition for the best dance team in the state. And we wanted to win. I practiced twice a day. And I loved it so much. I was busy all the time. And I felt less sad about my dad. Once at evening practice, we were running our dance for the fifth time. Ava was relentless and kept yelling at us that we were dancing like crap. Even though I could see that everyone was trying their best and there was nothing to complain about. Ava, we are all exhausted today. We'll continue tomorrow. There's still time. I protested. Oh, I soon came to regret that very much. Why? You'll know in a minute. But now subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell. There are a lot of cool stories ahead for you. So, hearing my objection, Ava clenched her hands into fists and hovered over me. Here I decide when training is over. And if you have a problem with that, the door is open. Ava hissed at me. From that moment on, there was a cold, merciless war between us. But I didn't care. I wanted to perform in the competition and bring victory to our group. And I was sure I could do it. A couple of days before the competition, I rushed to practice. While texting my mom that I would be back late, I didn't notice the car pulling out of the school parking lot. The loud sound of brakes frightened me, but also stopped me. What are you doing? Are you bored with your life? A guy jumped out of the car. I apologized, and the guy came over and held out his hands. I'm sorry, my bad, no worries. I'm Patrick. We shook hands, and Patrick held my hand in his. And then I felt someone's eyes on my back. Ava. She opened her mouth in surprise as she stared at me and Patrick. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm late. I'll see you later. Patrick jumped back in the car and sped off, winking at me. Now you're screwed, you upstart. I felt like I was about to blow steam out of Ava's ears with anger. I turned around and hurried to class. Everyone at school was talking about the dance competition. The girls were nervous, and so was I. And then came the very day. The competition was held at our school. Classes were canceled. A lot of different teams from other schools arrived. We were preparing ourselves in the locker room. I tried to stay calm, but it was so hard. At least two people came to support me. My mom and Patrick. Yes, yes. The last few days we had begun to actively chat with him. And after the contest, we agreed to go somewhere out together. It was half an hour before our band performed. The hall was buzzing, full of people. There is a knock on the locker room and the principal and a policeman appear on the doorstep. Savannah James. The policeman looks around. I shudder inside. 
but I stepped forward. Come with us. I can't. We're about to perform now. I shouted. You're in custody, Samantha. And the policeman pointed to the door with a glance. I knew it was no use arguing. With my head down, I staggered after the policeman. I caught Ava's triumphant look on my face a second before. And there I was at the police station. It turned out an anonymous complaint had been filed against me. My locker had been searched, and they found my classmate's cell phone there, which had been stolen yesterday. I knew who had done it, but how could I prove it? Because of this case, I would now be expelled from school. I couldn't hold back my tears anymore, and I started crying. All of a sudden, Ava showed up at the doorstep of the police station. I'll say there's been a misunderstanding, and it's not your fault, Ava hissed. But only if you promise me something, Savannah. I was willing to do anything. Get off the team and stay away from Patrick. He's mine. The girl said quietly, I don't know what to do. If I do not stick to the proposal, Ava will become a nightmare. The investigation, the proceedings. But to give up dancing, I just started to enjoy life again. What would you do? Write to me. I'll be waiting. I'm Fanny, and I have three boyfriends. Didn't expect that, right? So until I was 15, I didn't have boyfriends because I spent all my time studying. Besides, I was doing extra dancing and swimming, and I loved it. But suddenly, six months ago, I realized that I was looking at guys, and they were paying attention to me. At first, I met Luke from our school. He was a very smart guy, well-read, a real intellectual, and he and I could talk for hours on different topics. Of course, we started dating. And then, I happened to talk to the guy during my lunch break in the cafeteria. Freddy, he was the life of the party. He had the best sense of humor I had ever seen. He was always fun and noisy. And when he asked me to go out with him a week later, I said yes. I don't know how it happened, but I liked him. And I liked Luke. So, I started dating both of them. And it was a blast. One day, I was going out with Luke, and the next day with Freddy. I was equally excited to see both of them. We hardly ever ran into each other at school. Freddy studied in a different building, Luke at the same one, but it wasn't a big deal. A month ago, on my way home on the bus, Benjamin saved me from falling over due to the driver's harsh brakes. I don't usually hold on to the handrails, and this time, if not for this guy's firm hand, I would have definitely fallen. I thanked him embarrassedly for his help, and Benjamin invited me in for coffee. We chatted until late in the evening. Benjamin walked me home and kissed my hand goodbye. I was smitten. Well, as you already know, I started dating Benjamin too. That's how I got three boyfriends at the same time. Three totally different young men who I was equally interested in. I came up with a scheme not to mix things up. So, I started dating Luke on Monday and Thursday, Freddy on Tuesday and Friday, and Benjamin on Wednesday and Saturday. I spent Sundays with my family. I explained to every guy that I couldn't see him more than twice a week because my parents were very strict, and everyone put up with it until one moment that changed everything. Before I continue, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you have clicked on the bell. Then you'll know when there's a new video coming out on the channel. So everything was great. I was taking turns dating my boyfriends. I was paying attention to each one. And everyone was happy. But at school, the final exams began. I had to study a lot, rehearse and I was very tired. I was not getting enough sleep. 
I was nervous, and I couldn't even say what day of the week would be tomorrow. Monday? Or Wednesday? Or maybe Saturday? And my dating patterns with the guys were cracking at the seams. I once texted Luke that I couldn't go out with him tomorrow, to which, after a short pause, he told me that we didn't have an agreement because tomorrow was Wednesday, not Monday. And then I went on a date one day, confident that I would see Freddy, who would cheer me up, but Benjamin came instead. And all I could do was greet him with a short, You? Did we have a date? To which Benjamin took offense. I hadn't seen Luke in two weeks, and he was tracking me down at school, which was risky because Freddy might be somewhere nearby. And then, in short, I knew I had to end this trio. I spent a week deciding who I should stay with, and I still haven't made up my mind. Each one of them was attacking me with messages and phone calls, sending angry memes, and I knew that I couldn't wait any longer. Help me decide who to stay with. Who should I choose? Smart Luke? Funny Freddy? Or suave Benjamin? Who would you choose? Write me, please. I'm looking forward to your advice.